If you have your Bibles with you, I'd ask you to turn to the book of Genesis, Genesis chapter 14, and we're going to begin reading in verse 20. Genesis chapter 14, we're going to begin reading in verse 20. Genesis 14, 20, the Bible says, And blessed be the Most High God, who have delivered thine enemies unto thine hand, and he gave him time to fall. And the king of Sodom said unto Abram, Give me the persons, and take the goods to thyself. And Abram said to the king of Sodom, I have lifted up mine hand unto the Lord, the Most High, the possessor of heaven and earth. I will not take from a I will not take from a thread even to a shoe latch, and that I may not take anything that is thine, lest thou shouldst say, I have made Abram rich. Save only that which the young men have eaten, and the portion of men which went with, went with me, Ader, Eschol, Mamre, did them, let them take their portion. And read known in the 15th. After these things, the word of the Lord came unto Abram in a vision, saying, Fear not, Abram, I am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward. And Abram said, Lord God, what wilt thou give me, seeing I go childless? And the steward of my house is this Eleazar of Damascus? And Abram said, Behold, to me thou hast given no seed, and lo, and lo one born in my house is mine heir. And behold, the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, This shall not be thine heir, but he shall come forth out of thine own bowels, shall be thine heir. And he brought him forth abroad and said, Look, into the, look, to, look now toward heaven, and tell the stars if thou be able to number them. And he said unto him, So shall thy seed be. And he believed in the Lord. And it was counted unto him for righteousness. Amen. I'd like to preach, the Lord be my helper this morning, on some things that hinder your faith. Lord Jesus, we thank you for another time to be in your house, Lord. We thank you for a time to meet with your people here at Dover, Lord. We give you the praise and the glory for it. God, we thank you for your word this morning, Lord. We uh, know that it's a record and it's a help to us, Lord. And we pray that you would bless it this morning. Lord, allow us to put every idol to fall away and that we might just focus in on what you've given us and we'd be faithful to give you the praise, the glory, and the honor for it all. For it is in Christ's name I do pray. Amen. Now, uh, fairly familiar verses in the Bible and I just read uh, from one chapter to the next to get the whole story and when you're studying your Bible, always remember that the breaks and chapters and the divisions in the verses or just put there by the King James staff so that people could locate verses easy. Uh, but this was just uh, the, this was just a continuing story. Now, if you know your Bible, what has just happened is because of uh, because of. Uh, uh, rebellion and because of sin, uh, the king of Sodom is captured, and uh, even Lot and some of his things are captured. And so uh, Abram comes to their aid and 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 comes down to rescue them and deliver them. And in this we see is Abraham as a type of deliverer, and he does it. Now I want you to see that the immediate thought of the king of Sodom is, "I'll pay for that. I'll make it right." Now Abram refuses. You 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 can't buy your salvation. You can't buy faith. And you can't buy deliverance. And so uh, we find that Abram was really teaching him a, a precept that's all through the Bible is that it's just completely of God. And so he refuses to uh, take anything from the king of Sodom and just simply accepts uh, uh, and says, if you want to give it to the ones that help me, you can give it to them. I also want you to see that he says... The reason he wanted, didn't want to take anything in verse 24, save that, um, I'm sorry, verse 23, that I will not take from even a thread, uh, uh, even to a shoe latch, then I will not take anything that is thine, lest thou shouldst say, I 
had made Abram rich. Now, I want you to see that Abraham, or Abram as he's known here, he wanted people to know that his riches and his blessings came from God. They did not come from the man around him. They did not come from even Abram's own efforts, but they came entirely from God. And, you know, we live in a day and age today where we think that we can accomplish, that we can get it done. If we have this job, it's going to be this way. If we have that job, we can make this happen. But just always remember, it always comes from God. Uh, things that are worthwhile uh, belong to Him, and He, he will give them... Uh, you know, that's a great type of faith. And we live in a day and age today where I think that type of faith is lacking, and, and we begin to depend on self. In the first verse of chapter 15, after these things... Now, remember what had happened. That's the reason I read that part of 14. The deliverance from, uh, of the king of Sodom... And the deliverance of Lot after those things. You know, uh, sometimes there has to be a mighty event in your life to get a uh, hold of your ten attention. And it could be good as it is with it. I mean, uh, it wasn't a bad thing except that Lot was, uh, was, was in bondage. It wasn't a bad thing that happened. But after that big chain of events, Abraham met with God. You know, sometimes there has to be a, a, a something in your life kind of turn the table over to get your attention. If it's good or bad, if it's hard or if it's easy, something comes along and says, wait, you know what? Things, huh, there's some important things around. Uh, there, there, there's some events in our life that, that, that isn't just by happen chance, but rather offered by, the, uh, offered by God. And after that, after these things, the word of the Lord came unto Abram in a vision saying, Fear not, Abram, I am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward. Now, I want you to see what, what is bred out of this when we get to verse 6 is that uh, Abram begins to have faith. But in the first, the first verse of that chapter... Uh, you have the contrary piece, the thing that will fight faith, the thing that will cripple faith, that will bring it down to nothing, and that's fear. So this morning, if you want to build your faith and increase your faith and improve your faith, you're going to have to get rid of fear. Yeah. Right. Fear will end your faith. Even in the tempest of the storm. And if you don't believe that, ask Peter. You know, he was literally walking on water. Peter followed him for a few steps, walking on the water, and then he looked around and he lost his faith. You know, a lot of people say, uh, can you lose your faith? Sure you can. Now, you can't lose your salvation, but you can lose your faith. And so we see here that uh, Abram uh, begins to have a faith like no other, begins to have a faith like uh, is unsurmountable in, in the Word of God. And it says, uh, the first thing, get rid of your fear. Verse 2, and Abram said, Lord God, what will thou give me, seeing I go childless? Now, you can see that Abram was a what was a precessor to Baptist because the first thing he prays is, what are you going to give me? Uh, what am I going to get out of this thing? Now, he did want an heir, but the uh, he brought a problem to God. He brought a big problem to God. Now, for the best we understand by this point, probably Abram was about 83, 84 years old, somewhere in that ballpark of age. Uh, and he goes, I don't have an heir. Uh, there, there's nobody going to inherit this. Now, he did have a lot of stuff to inherit, but I, I think more important than that, he wanted, uh, uh, he wanted somebody to inherit the faith. He wanted somebody to understand and be able to carry on uh, following the Lord God of heaven. He wanted a people that would be left behind him. And you know what? Uh, we live in a day and age today. If you have more than two kids, you're like gypsies. You just you have so many that you don't know what to do with. But you know the word of God uh, have as many have as many as the Lord gives you. And, and you know what? That was the desire of Abraham and Sarah was to have children 
so that they could carry on the faith. It wasn't so much about the inheritance. It was that things would continue in a certainly the way that Abraham uh, trusted God. And so he asked him the question, who will be my heir? And then he says, I go childless, and the steward of my house is this Eleazar of Damascus. In other words, do you want me to give it to Eleazar? And he asked that twice. This is the first time he asked it, and he asked it again. And, you know, uh, Eleazar was a good friend, but he wasn't the heir. You know, be very careful the friends you make. You be very cautious of, of who you place your trust in well enough to call your friend. Verse 4, And behold, the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, This, meaning Eleazar, this shall not be thine heir, but he that shall come forth out of, mine own, out of thine own bowels shall be thine heir. Now, see, the statement that uh, uh, sometimes uh, we don't get the miraculous statement that God made in this, but He was saying, Abraham, you're going to have a son. At 84, at this point, and the promised child still had not come, at 84, He said, you're going to have a son. Now, we don't have an 84-year-old in here, but we have a close, you're going to have a son. Can you imagine Brother Junior having another child? And let's say he's 70, just say seven years down the road, he had, you're going to have another child. That's hard to believe. It is for me. It would be hard for me to believe have another child now. Much less when I'm 40 years further down the turnpike. You see what I'm saying? Uh, but can our God do it? Sure he can. He can still do it today. And if he wants a 90-year-old woman to have a child, you know what's going to happen? A 90-year-old woman will have a child. Because it's under his authority. It's under, it's under his dominion. And so, uh, but we as Abram, nothing special about him. Same stuff we're cut out of. No, 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 no bells and whistles came with Abram. If somebody said to the average 84-year-old man, you're going to have a child, we would laugh to scorn. But he can do it. So, what made a difference with Abraham or Abram? What was uh, what was the difference? What what happened here that that caused uh, that caused this uh, event to transpire? That 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 he took it in for what he said. And he, meaning God in verse 5, and he brought him, meaning Abraham, forth abroad and said, Look now toward the heaven and tell the stars if, they, if thou be able to uh, number them, that, and, and, he shall, and he said unto them, So shall thy seed be. And he believed in the Lord and counted it to him for righteousness. Now, I want you to see there is a very unusual way that that's put. Did it say that he believed the promise? No. It said he believed in the Lord. So, when the Lord gives us these great promises that seem unbelievable to us, just put your faith in the Lord. And what I have found when I do that, if I put my faith in the Lord, the promises are a lot easier to accept. The, the, the truth is a lot better. Just, just, you know what? I can't understand it, but I know God can do it. I, I, I don't know what it, I don't know the circumstances. I don't know what all have to fall into place, but I believe my God is able to do it. That's where faith begins. And we live in a day and age today, and I, I look around. Uh, listen, our faith is pretty light compared to most people today. So, uh, really what, we, I believe we get the element of faith, the base element of faith is this, do you believe in God? And the second thing, do you believe your God's able? You know what the most dangerous part of spiritualizing a God is? That it only applies to the Spirit. Our God is a, is a sovereign, great God. You know why I'm breathing right now? Because there's a God. And you know what I breathe in every time I take a good breath of air? Good old clean Tennessee air. You know who made that God? See, we have to have that type of faith. 
He, he, he's interacting not only in our spiritual life, but in our physical lives. Every day, every moment, every time, He's always involved in everything we do. And so, as, uh, as Abraham looks at this situation, he believed in God. He believed in the Lord. He believed in the person of this book. And because he did, it was counted to him for righteousness. Now, I want you to go to Hebrews chapter 11. You all are familiar with this. And we're going we're to look at some, some of these people who wound up believing God to the point <laughs> that it impacted their lives. You ever wanted a barometer to measure how much faith that you have? Well, I think the best one is how much it impacts your life. You know, people who believe the Bible come to church. I found that to be true. And you say, like, well, you know, I love the Lord, but I just ain't able to get to church. You know what? I'm not saying they're lost, but I'm saying they lack faith. I will say that. And the reason I say that, the Bible says, Forsake not the assembling of yourselves together, as the manner of some is, and so much more as you see the day approaching. Do you believe that? I do. I believe that just as much as I believe that when the Bible says in the beginning God, and so if I believe by faith in the beginning God, and God spoke this whole universe into speaking, if He says, I want you to be in church, that means something to me. I have faith enough in that that well, I better be down at the Lord's house. You see, it, it really does matter. Real faith will impact your life and habit won't. Right. If you're just coming to church out of habit, it'll eventually go away. I used to smoke. It was a habit. Right? And now I don't. Does that make sense? It, 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 I didn't have any faith in cigarettes, right? I didn't, I didn't think they could do nothing for me. So it was just a habit. Got rid of it, right? So I'm fearful today, instead of faith, a lot of people come here out of habit, not just here, but I mean in church in general, that's just a thing to do. Mm -hmm. Up to the 1950s, there wasn't else anything to do on Sunday. Everybody said, oh, back in the 50s, what, the reason there were so many people here, <laughs> or wherever, but what nothing else to do? Their faith didn't bring them, because when there were other options, they left. That makes sense? And so we as the Lord's people, what is your faith motivating you to do? And these individuals that ended up in this great hall of faith given to us in uh, uh, Hebrews chapter 11, they believed God to the point it impacted their life. Ele uh, Hebrews 11 in the first verse, now faith... You want to know what faith is? Now, faith is the substance, the, the matter, the strength of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Can you see that I'm saved? No. You will never be able to glance at Larry and say, man, he's saved and sound as a dog. But there are some evidences. I come down to the house of God when it's meeting time. To the best of my ability, as long as I'm able, I'm going to preach the glorious gospel of Christ. That's evident. You know what? Preaching is not fun. It's not something I ever aspired to do. It's faith. You're, well, whatever happened on the inside will come out. And people, uh, we live in a day and age today where you wonder about the level of their faith. So the first thing that we see about faith is it will impact other things. Verse 2, For by it, meaning faith, the elders obtained a good report. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the Word of God. Creation faith. In the beginning, God. So that the things which were seen huh, were not made of things that do appear. By faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice. Now I think it's very a very unusual thing that Adam 
did not make it into the great hall of faith, don't you? Uh, I tell you another individual that didn't, that we often almost immortalize, is Seth. Seth didn't make it to the great hall of faith, did he? But Abel did. And why did Abel do it? Because he, he, had, he offered a more excellent sacrifice. And you know what? When, when you look at that, the excellent sacrifice was this. Something had to die. It wasn't fruits and vegetables. He loved God so much, he was willing to cut the throat of his lamb. See, it went beyond reason. You know what? Uh, we never had lambs. We had milk goats when the kids were smaller. And you know what? They was they were sweet little goats. I, I wouldn't have I wouldn't have killed one for nothing. And Adam was our goat person. He 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 truly. I mean, he go up there and just sit and stroke on them like a cat. And asking him, Adam, I want you to cut cut it cut her throat would have been a very difficult thing. So why, why was Abel able to do that? Because of faith. God commanded it, so He was going to do it. That's blind faith. He didn't have to ask why. He didn't say, this little lamb is mine. He, said, he, said, he, didn't, he didn't say, I love this thing so much. He did it because God said it. That's it. That is faith. Why I come to the house of God is because the Bible says, forsake not the assembling of yourselves together. I believe that, so I come in faith. I continue to preach the gospel because the Bible says, through the foolishness of preaching, I will save the lost. So I'll keep on preaching. I don't need a new program. I don't need a youth program. I don't need a bus ministry. I don't need a children's program. I simply need to preach the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's faith. Amen. And we live in a day and age which, tell, which they will tell you everything else will work. But this is what the Bible says. So what does your faith make you do? Abel was an excellent example because not understanding necessarily what sacrificial law was about, he did it by faith and faith alone. Verse 6, But without faith, it is impossible to please Him. Now if you underline in your Bible, you get that one down. But uh, without faith. So when you come here, if you come here by routine, you're not pleasing God. Did you get that? If you're coming out of habit because it's Sunday and you know that Brother Larry's going to be upset if you don't show up, there's no faith in that. If you come here because you love the Lord and because simply the Word has commanded you to, by faith you come. That's well pleasing the Lord. You know what? You don't have to know what the Bible. You know what? I don't know that I fully understand the head covering. But I, 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 we practice it by faith. I don't have to understand it. Does that make sense? I don't have to understand. I believe I know why. But I don't have to understand why women are not permitted to preach the gospel, but I take it by faith. That's what the Bible says. It says the husband of one wife is to be a qualification of a bishop. A woman can't be a husband, so it's got to be a man. Does that make sense? I don't know why, but I believe it. Just take it by faith. And so we as Lord's people, I think that the hang-up in the modern day is the thought that God owes us an explanation. You know what? He don't owe you an explanation. If He said, I want you to believe that the sky is blue, is red, then just say the sky is red and move on. Does that make sense? We do not have to be... He doesn't have to justify any of His precepts to us whatsoever. It's just by faith. And when you begin to operate by that, your faith will grow. Verse 7, By faith Noah, being warned of God of things not seen as yet, moved with fear. Noah, it's going to come a flood. It's going to rain. You know what? Noah never ever says, What's rain? 
But at that point, it had never rained before. You know what? It was more believable that the fountains of the deep would break up because that's how we were moisturized before then. It, 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 as the moisture, the moisture came up from the, the soil instead of coming down. Right. Every night, that's how the world was moisturized. But in addition to the fountains of the deep coming up, it was going to do this thing never ever heard before uh, till that time. It's going to call rain. And rain is water coming down from the sky. That is going to happen. Build you a boat. And He moved on it. You know why? Because God said so. If we had been Noah, I'd want to know, what's rain? <laughs> You know, everybody that came by and jeered him and made fun of him and poked fun at him, <laughs> rain. <laughs> What's rain? Water from up there. You've got to be kidding. <clears throat> the only real difference was God said it and Noah believed it. Now, your faith can grow because I'll give, I'll give you this to try on. Shem, Ham, and Jephthah never heard him say that. Do you ever think about that? They never heard God say to Noah, Noah, it's going to rain. But he went and said, Sons, Sham, Ham, Jephthah, it's going to come a rain here in about 120 years, and we've got to make things ready. And they moved on it. They began to work. Nobody, you never had to hear one of those boys questioning what God had said to their father. See, his faith grew. He, he told his sons, and they thought, Well, God said it, we'll get ready. You know, that, that, that's a wonderful blessing if your faith has influenced your children. Unfortunately, a lot of times our lack of faith will influence them as well. And so we see that, and, and you know the truth, the accounting, they're delivered. Verse 8, by faith Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive for inheritance, obeyed, and he went out. Now, uh, uh, again, at this, at this point in Abraham's life, he was about 75, and just suppose the Lord God, and again, I hate to use you as an example again, said to you two, I want you to go to Arizona and start a new work down there close to the Mexican border. I'd say he'd only ever even been that far with us. It's dry and it's hot. My little time in Phoenix, I found out that it's dry and it's hot. The day I landed in Phoenix, it was 110 degrees. I don't want to be there. See the good green grass and the trees we got out here? Don't look for them in Phoenix. They're not there. But do you believe and trust God enough to do it if He said it? Because Abraham was called out and said, I want you to come, go to a land which I will shoot in. He didn't even say Phoenix. He didn't even say Arizona. He said, I'll tell you when you get there, I just want you to come. Yeah. Man, that takes a lot of faith. Not even knowing where you're going and saying, yeah, I'll get on the boat and come because you said to. That's faith. And if we get down to operating on faith like that, the Lord God will bless us greatly. If we get to the point where we're simply trusting what God said and, and, and that He provided that truth, we'll go on in the Lord and He will, he will bless us greatly for that. By faith, He sojourned in the land of promise as, a, as in a strange country, dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs of Him of the same promise. Now, imagine this, ladies. We're going to get up and go. Donna, we're going to move. Well, Larry, where are we going to move to? I don't know. We're just going to move. Get out. Sell everything that we have. Pack up all we can. Put it in the journey, which won't be very much. It just about cramps us off God with us in there and takes up about all the space. Head out and start driving. Larry, where are we going? I don't know. That was the trip that they made. That, that, that's how it happened. Sarah never asked 
Are we there yet? They just kept going. You know what? That takes a lot of faith. It takes a lot of faith, period. But when you're 65 and 75 years old, that's an incredible amount of faith. And just to keep going, and to keep going, and you know what? The thing of it is, just say, we did that, and after me and Donna are dead and gone, huh, Adam picks it up and says, hey, I don't know where we're going, but we're still going. And then after that happens, and he's dead and gone, AJ gets up and says, I don't know where we're going, but we're still going. Because that's exactly what happened. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and they never ever saw the land of promise, but they kept on going, and they did it by faith. They believed God would do it. And they just kept going. You know what that says to me? The best measure of your faith is are you keeping going? If you're, if you're ready to quit, your faith's about to be extended. But if you woke up this morning, and I, I sincerely trying to attend church truly 29 years, I get up and go this morning with the same zeal that I did in 1988, expecting, hey, this might be the last time we meet together. I'm going down to the house of God. And you know what? Should the Lord tarry is coming 30 years fast forward in the future, in 2047, I'll be down here with whoever's left because my faith will drive me to do that. That is what faith is about. And even then, God being my helper, I won't say, <clears throat> you know, gee, the Lord's not come back yet. I think I'm going to quit. That's not faith. Verse 10, For he, meaning Abraham, looked for a city which have foundations, whose builder and maker is God. Do you believe in heaven? Why? Faith. You know what? There's two heavens that you can see. Did you know that? Right out there this morning, I see a beautiful blue sky. That's the first heaven. I know that it's there because I can see it. At night, in a beautiful uh, summer evening, the, sun, the, the, sun, the clouds are not there. And you look up at the heavens above us and see those beautiful stars and all the constellations that we can behold here. And I know the second heaven's there because I can see it. But you know what? No one's ever saw the third heaven and lived to tell about it. John wrote it down. But I believe it's there. Just as sure as the stars that I'll see tonight, the third heaven is real. And I do, I, I say that by faith. And you know what? People that, you know, uh, we, need, we need to just accept it as faith and move on and, and believe and go on and have confidence in, uh, in who the Lord is. Verse 11. Through faith also, Sarah herself received strength to conceive seed and was delivered of a child when she was past age because she judged him faithful who had promised. Now, you know, a lot of people wonder about Sarah's situation. I believe Sarah was a saved woman because, listen, she believed God. He says, you're going to have a child. And you know what? Her faith grew with time because her first idea was, you know what? This thing ain't getting no better, so there's Hagar. You go in there and you have a child by Hagar, and we'll, and we'll grow a nation out of him. But somewhere along the way, she began to have faith. After the birth of Ishmael, the Godhead came down again and said, about this time next year. And what did Sarah do? She laughed. <coughs> somewhere between the time she laughed, and a few more months, her faith grew because she, she, she gave birth to a son. And the Bible documents very carefully here that Sarah's faith was real too. So what that tells me is this. Your faith, the faith of Abraham, I fully believe encouraged Sarah. But you know what? We can discourage faith too. What if Abraham had said, you know what, I just don't believe this, it's crazy. I mean, you're both nearly 100 years old. What? You know what? 
I believe that Abraham encouraged her. God said it. I believe it. It'll happen. And you know what? When, when, and when they headed out, that was 26 years later when they finally saw the fruition of what God had promised. And it may be many, 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 many years before you see the fruition, the bearing of what God's promised, but He'll do it. He's able. And that's where faith really begins. I want you to look down to verse 20. By faith, Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau concerning the things to come. Now, you know, they were always concerned about the birthright, but here it says, by faith, uh, Jacob uh, blessed, uh, the, they, I mean, by faith, Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau. And if you remember, he, he, he did that. And you know what? When, when he blessed them and made, he, he moved those promises forward, he hadn't even seen them himself. You know what, if you really study the life of the, the patriarchs, very, very little is said about Isaac. Just that he had two twin boys. That's about all that it says about him. But somewhere in that mysterious silence, he had faith. Because he passed it on to the boys. In fact, he passed the blessing to both of them, and there was twelve rebellious nations out of Esau, and twelve great nations out of Isaac, I mean, out of Joseph. And so I want you to see, uh, uh, I want you to see that faith ain't always measured in what happens in your life. Uh, like I said, very little, very little we know about Isaac. Just that he, he married Rebecca, and that Rebecca had a set of twins when she was quite old too, probably about sixty. And that's all we really know about him. Dug some wells, right? Mm. And, and so we see then as the Lord's people that it don't have to be bells and whistles and streamers for your faith to be mediated and your faith to go on. Verse 22, By faith Joseph, when he died, made mention of the departing of the children of Israel and gave commandment concerning his bones. Now you get that because faith is growing. He knew that he would never see the land that was promised to his grandfather. Really, his great grandfather. But he said, he had so much confidence when you get there, <laughs> take my bones with you. You see, that's a lot of faith. That, that's, uh, that, that's saying, I think this thing, I know this thing is going to happen. I'm going to be dead, but I know it's going to happen. Now, I have no idea uh, when the Lord is going to return. I really don't. People that tell you they do, you can just mark them down as stupid because they don't know any more than I do. Not even Jack Van Envy and Roxella. They stand in just much ignorance as I do as the coming of Christ. I can look at the times of the coming, but I don't know when. So you know what? It could well be I'll be 49 in December that I'll be out here before the coming of Christ. If, if that's the case, just know that I went there, stepped into eternity with Christ, but I, but I went out there looking for the day and promising you I may be out there, but hey, it's still coming. I may not see it, but it's out there, and I do that by faith. People say, huh, how do you know there's a God? And, and you be very careful when you get into that conversation because they want you to answer them with facts and figures. When I get asked that question, I say, I know there's a God by faith. Faith is, faith is miserable by the way it impacts your life. And you have very little faith, really, if it doesn't change your life. Verse 24, By faith Moses... When he was come to years, well, I'm going to read verse 23 too. By faith, Moses, when he was born, was hid three months of his parents because they saw that he was a proper child, and they were not afraid of the king's commandment. Now, I want you to see this is very unusual because their faith dispels fear. What was the very first statement that we heard way back in the days of Abraham? Fear not, Abraham, Abram. I will make of thee a great nation. See, fear is always going to bring down your faith. 
If you're afraid to proclaim the Word of God, you won't be able to do it. But if you just have confidence in God, you know, I, don't, I know I don't have no ability, but I know my God does, things will go well. And, and, and so we see that huh, not only did they have a faith that they, were, that they weren't fearful of the Egyptian people, they also trans, huh, they moved that faith forward in their son. By faith, Moses, when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasure of sin for a season. Now, I want you to get that level of faith because I don't think that we have it in the modern day. He gave up everything. He was in line for the Egyptian throne. And said, no way. More money than any of us could imagine. More prestige than President Trump. And he says, nope, not me. You know what? We would think he needed his head examined. He did that by faith, knowing spiritual things run much deeper than carnal things. And we see that the Lord God blessed that faith too because He became the instrument in God's hand to be the deliverer of God's people. Now, I want you to show you something interesting and I'm, I'm going to close. And all through here, verse 29, by faith they passed through the Red Sea as on dry land which the Egyptians assuaged to go down to to do were drowned. In other words, they didn't have faith to do it and they were drowned. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell after they were compassed about seven days. Now that's very unusual. Why? Moses was dead when that happened. Did you ever think about that? Why, why is that inserted in Moses' faith? Because he, he, he died probably about a month before that happened. The reason it's that way is his faith impacted their faith. You know what? And I believe he much as surely he knew the walls were going to go zoo and that his people were going to run over. He never saw it. He didn't get to see it. Maybe he saw it from the other side. I don't know. But he knew it was going to happen. See, I don't know when the Lord Jesus Christ is coming, but I know that he is. I may die, my grandchildren may live a full, fruitful life and be gone too. But they don't, they don't change my mind one bit. He's coming. What kind of faith do you have? You say, well, Brother Larry, I don't know. Well, the answer is this. What does it drive you to do? Does it drive you to speak of the goodness of God? Does it drive you to come down to His house? Does it, does it drive you... Uh, to, to speak of His name to people that you find along the way. What, what is the measuring piece of your faith this morning? Well, you'd be lying and I'd be lying to you if I didn't say sometimes my faith does go weak. Sometimes I begin to wonder why. You know, what's the point? Everybody ever felt like that? I have. What's the point anyway? Well, that's when huh, you need to pray for my faith. It, it, it'll, it'll bring you out of it. Just like in the, the, the days of Paul and Silas, they, they weren't singing a happy tune when they first got to the prison. But they did eventually. Uh, I believe they remembered their faith, don't you?